Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Video Analytics 101. We are doing these sessions once per month where um, we invite experts from the industry to talk about video analytics. And this is really supposed to be an educational session, so we're not here to promote any products, but really for all of us to learn more in the area of video analytics. Last month, we had a super exciting one where we talked about where we talked with Teresa from Bosch about smoke and fire detection, which was super interesting. So if you haven't seen this, head over to YouTube, type in Video Analytics 101. You can watch the video. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Today, we have a super interesting session where we talk about video analytics and IoT. We will be talking about IoT in general, what it is, what cameras are capable of today, how they're becoming more and more an IoT sensor and what you can do with it, what are use cases, and finally, we will take a look into the future. And to talk about this, I have today Philippe here with me. Philippe is the European Strategic Partner Manager at iPro. So welcome, Philippe. Great to have you. Thank you, Florent. Hello. Bonjour. So um, let me start off with just uh, talking about IoT so we are all at the same uh, we know uh, what we're talking about, right? Uh, we have all heard about IoT. IoT stands for Internet of Things, which first came up in the middle to end of 80s, 90s, but it really started to take off at the beginning of the 2000s. And when we talk about IoT devices, what we mean is devices that talk to each other. And this is compared to, for example, our laptop, where you're watching this right now, or your phone. These are devices that talk to us as humans, and we talk to these devices. It's really meant for us to use it. While IoT is, uh, is talking about devices talking to each other, so it's a lot about automation. And in fact, in 2020, this was the first year that the amount of IoT devices globally surpassed the amount of other devices. So we, since 2020, we have more IoT devices out there than laptops, phones, PC, and whatnot. And the amount of devices, the regular devices, stays pretty flat. It's around 10 billion a year, while the amount of IoT devices is really taken off. And this year, we're around 16 billion devices. So this is really a thing, and it's becoming just more and more. And that's why I'm so super excited to talk about the impact on video surveillance. So maybe to start us off, uh, Philippe, can you talk a little bit about what is possible today in terms of video analytics and AI? So what can you do on the camera today? What kind of uh, information can you even detect? Um, actually, uh, with, uh, with the camera, we are uh, adding uh, all the analytics on the edge. It's, uh, it's uh, very important and it's very important for, for this IoT uh, or to use the camera as an IoT device. So we, we don't have a centralized uh, uh, system and architecture, and, and we have everything inside the camera. So the camera um, is able to, to manage uh, AI analytics with using deep learning function. Um, and we have some uh, analytics that we can install directly inside the camera. So uh, the, the, the camera can do first uh, distinction between human, vehicle, uh, bicycle, and uh, by doing that, we can create some rules inside the camera to uh, basically uh, do uh, some people uh, detection on some area or people counting. Uh, and it's the same for uh, car, it's the same for, for bicycle. This is the very uh, basic functionality. Um, after that, we can uh, add uh, some... Um, uh, additional information. So we speak about car, but uh, uh, we we want to uh, know uh, at the end how many car, SUV, or truck uh, are passing, and maybe also the speed average of each car. We are uh, inside the city. We are analyzing a road uh, because uh, maybe we expect to do some construction in the future, or maybe. Uh, as you explained uh, before, uh, we would like to have local interaction uh, thanks to this uh, sensor. And I think this is a very important point. This is why it's important that the, the detection, the analytics is happening on the camera. And this really um, can turn the camera into an IoT device because you do not need to transfer the video or the information before um, getting the data out. So you can really create the data on the camera itself and then act upon it. So as you're mentioning, there are a lot of applications where you can 
act locally, even if there's no network available to a central location, these devices could locally talk to each other and trigger some actions. Exactly. Um, so uh, one, one thing that we hear a lot when we talk about IoT, especially recently and also in the surveillance industry, is MQTT. Can you, uh, can you explain us what is MQTT and what do you use it for? MQTT is a protocol for a message querying telemetry transport. It's a protocol used in, in IoT and not only, in fact, it's a protocol who, uh, who is able to, to send data with a very, very low uh, bandwidth or size of, of data. Um, uh, you are maybe using every day, uh, in fact, uh, MQTT because some uh, chat application on the mobile phone are using this protocol in order to very reduce the quantity of data uh, used uh, to be, uh, let's say, uh, less invoiced by the, the provider. So it's a protocol, it's a standard protocol in IoT uh, to send a very low quantity of data. Okay, that's cool. And I, and this is, I guess, the reason why it's used a lot in IoT, because it's uh, it's so lightweight, right? Yes, yeah, so, so in, in IoT, you can have a remote device who don't have a, a dedicated internet connection or a good internet connection. And also you can have a local interaction uh, between uh, IoT device. Okay. Uh, let me just mention that there are other protocols that are used in IoT as well. I mean, there's SNMP, there's BACnet, Modbus, OPC. Um, but those have, my personal feeling is they have been around for quite some time. And recently I hear more about, more and more about MQTT. So in my feeling is that it moves towards MQTT when it comes to IoT devices. Um, and my understanding is the iPro cameras support MQTT, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, all our new uh, iPro uh, camera using AI on the edge. And in fact, all the application inside the camera are using and compatible with uh, MQTT. Okay. So, so the cameras are really becoming a, a, a sensor device. Um, I mean, of course, you can use cameras as, as always for recording video, but more and more with, the, with AI and video analytics and the IoT standards, they're really becoming a sensor that can connect to other devices. Um, maybe let's talk a little bit about use cases. So what, what can you do with it if you, if you have your detection on the camera? Um, what can you automate with it? And how can you connect to other IoT devices? We have uh, an application, uh, let's say, uh, name it uh, occupancy uh, detection. So we will be able to create a zone inside the image and, and to count the, the number of uh, human or, or car. If we focus on car, uh, we can uh, create a, a zone in front of uh, the traffic light as a use case. And depend of the number of cars in front of uh, this lane or this other lane, we can maybe interact with the traffic light uh, to uh, favorize uh, this road uh, instead of another one. Um, it, it, with the same camera, with the same place, uh, we can also use this uh, same application to interact with the pole light, uh, not only the, the traffic light, but the, the light of the city. Maybe if you have nobody on the place, you don't need to have light on, on this area. And if a car or a people are coming, uh, you can also interact with the light of the city, um, place by place, zone by zone, uh, and interact locally directly. Yeah, and, and this is actually really interesting because when we look at all the smart city projects that are out there, usually the first thing that a city is looking at in terms of a smart city is how can I optimize lighting because it's such a huge cost factor. And using these cameras, uh, it sounds to me like we can optimize cost a lot because we don't need the cameras on if there's nothing happening. And only if the camera detects someone, then it really switches on the light. And maybe only in this section, right? So I could imagine maybe there is a big parking place and you don't need to switch off on all the cameras of the parking space, but it, basically the light could follow the car or the person, right? Yeah. When, they, uh, when they cross the parking. Exactly. And if we compare that to a sensor, in fact, the... the... Uh, the sensor will uh, manage a very small uh, area. And now with our new um, S-series uh, high resolution camera with 4K product, we can look at a wider view. And uh, on the parking, we can see a very uh, wide uh, 
part of the parking and manage different zones, different light, depending if the car is uh, on the left, on the right, on the top of the image. Uh, it's not one camera is one sensor. No, on, inside one image, you can create at the end a lot of different sensors. Okay, and uh, of course, just to clarify, of course, the camera needs to use infrared light because you need to detect if there's no environmental Definitely. light. Yeah. Yes. Um, and yeah, and, and the other use case is also very interesting with the red light because mm -hmm. and that's also an issue for, for cities and it's also usually a smart city project to optimize the traffic inside of a city where you have a lot of traffic lights that are unnecessarily going on and off. And if there's no one, you don't need the traffic light, but only really when people want to cross the streets, then you want to switch them. Uh, and this is great because um, so far, um, cities are doing this with other sensors. I know that there are induction loops in the ground, I think, for to detect cars, and there might be something else for, for people. But using the cameras, I could imagine, is a much more cost-effective solution, right? Yes, yes. I live in Paris. <laughs> And I, I know how many times I stay on the traffic light in the middle of the <laughs> night where nothing happened and, and you didn't wait anymore anyway. Well, if you're in Paris, you also wait a lot in traffic jams, not only in the traffic. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, um, so this is pretty cool. I, I also want to mention that um, these are uh, solutions that could actually work locally, as, as we said. It's very nice. Um, but there are also central solutions. I know this from, from our system, from Security Center, where you can integrate IoT devices as well, as well as cameras, where you can combine more. I could imagine also a use case where um, you, your camera detects something locally, and then you can um, um, automatically send a drone there, for example, for more context information. Um, yes. And to combine a drone as an IoT device with a camera as an IoT device with a, maybe also a central system in the middle. Yes. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, do you have any idea where uh, where this will go into the future? So if, if you look into the future um, of IoT, I just mentioned there are more and more devices. Cameras are becoming also IoT devices. Uh, do you think that there will be more specific AI features on the cameras? Will there be more integrations with other um, IoT sensors? Yeah, yeah, yes, definitely. Um, the, the target in the future is to have more and more AI inside the camera. We speak uh, today about one, two, three applications, but uh, most probably in the future, we will have more and more applications inside the camera and, uh, and uh, using uh, more and more uh, with, with, with processor much more efficient also um, yeah. in the future. So the AI on the edge and uh, stopping to have a lot of uh, server as a central central site uh, is, is uh, on what we are working for the for the future. Um, what what I didn't mention before is uh, usually when we talk about IoT devices, we're thinking about um, an Alexa Echo, for example, talking to my Philips uh, Hue um, lighting. Uh, so this is what we know as as consumers, but. Just the same, there are IoT devices in the in the B2B market, as you mentioned. So lighting is a great example, traffic lights, um, HVAC systems in, uh, in in big buildings. So that's a huge deal to optimize uh, to optimize uh, power consumption, lighting, heating inside of buildings using I IoT protocols um, and connecting all these devices. So this is very important. Mm -hmm. So that one one aspect that I just remembered, and the other one, um, it's also a privacy issue, right? So if you're if you're able to uh, detect something locally and steer something locally. Maybe for some applications, you never even need to transfer the video stream uh, and just use the camera as a sensor and then discard the video and you just use it as an input and locally uh, steer something. Exactly. And, and ever, even if uh, um, there are some doubt about the fact that it's a camera and they are a video, we have also our privacy guard application with allow to um, activate a privacy filter on all the human or on all the face. So at the end, the camera will be able to do all the analytics like a pure sensor, send an image, but with a privacy mask on the people or on the face uh, directly. So you will have uh, a pri uh, an image uh, using this um, privacy guard. Yeah, so... Uh, so um... Privacy protection in this case, of course, is very important. And I, I just want to stress this for the city applications as well. Um, smart cities are growing. We're deploying more and more sensors, more and more cameras. 
but privacy considerations are very important when we talk about smart cities because we sometimes need to store the information but we want to do it in a, in a secure way and of course um, masking people is very important encryption is important authentication um, having a secure way to transfer it between uh, between locations is important so absolutely so this is definitely an important part of a whole iot smart city uh, deployment as we deploy more and more cameras yes all right so um did we miss anything did you want to add anything else um no i think we, i think we we we, we talk about uh, everything so so iot uh, so this mqtt protocol and all this analytic uh, are uh, let's say now compatible with uh, most our uh, cameras so like full hd 5 mega 4k um, in, in, in general uh, and no 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 limitation on, on that uh, on our product uh, all right so um then that's it um we try to keep these things short so uh so um it's easy to consume consumable thank you philip uh, for joining us here to talk about video surveillance and iot thank as you. i mentioned <laughs> thank you as i mentioned we're doing this once per month um uh, again the recording is available on the youtube channel don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel so you do not miss anything else we already have a very exciting talk for you uh, lined up for next month, which will go more into the GPU hardware acceleration uh, part, um, which will be very interesting. So look forward to that. Other than that, thank you for joining and uh, see you next time. Thank you.